Welcome to the Gunnersville Grassroots Podcast presented by Frog Talks. I'm your host, Pat Kenimer, and believe it or not, Trey Swindle is back. Again. Again. This is two times in a row. Two times in a row. That might be the last time. I (laughs) forgot that I was supposed to be here, but I made it. Hey, I called him this morning, and he answered his phone. Those of you that know that, know him, are going to not believe that, but he really did. I did. Matter of fact, I've called him twice today, and he answered both times, so I kind of feel special. Which I answered, and you were like, hey, are you coming today? And I was like, uh... Was today? I, I didn't know what I was supposed to. I wasn't planning on it, but yeah, yeah, okay, we're here. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of not surprised you didn't know what day it was. So. Well, and then I remember us talking about it, whatever day we were going to do it last week. But I was like, you know how I get traveling. Now you whatever. remember? No, yeah. I, well, when you said that, I knew we had talked about doing it this week because next week I'm going to be gone at you fall or whatever. So I knew we were supposed to after you said that, but I had forgot. Right, right. So you've been home for two weeks. Uh, pretty much. I, I had the ABT oh. at Miller's Ferry, or yeah, where whatever crap pole we went to. Yeah, how'd that work out? Crap pole. Crap pole. Yep. You're yep. not you're not itching to go back. Mm-mm. See any gators? Kay listens to this sometimes, so I won't say too much. But well, if I it's mean, on the schedule again, Trey and Luke will not fish the entire series. No, you'll will, just skip that I day. Swear, yeah, no, I won't fish the other two. <laughs> if it's on the schedule, I'm out. I'm out. Which I mean, I will say, like the fishing wasn't. No, it was terrible. But, like, early in the morning, it's kind of this, that time of the year. If you're on, like, a river, like, if you don't catch them early, you're done. You yeah. know, and you could get some bites early, but they still would weigh. I knew we could catch some fish, but I lost, like, one four-pounder on a buzz bait. I won't say I lost him. He just, I had it for just a second. I actually had that same fish blow up in practice, and I've never done that before. It was in the same little thing under, a light, under like, a hangover tree, and there was a little branch under it. And I had, like, a big one hit it right there in practice and miss it, and then, Went back the next day, Friday or Saturday morning, and the same cast. And my initial reaction was like, oh, crap, he missed my bus bait. So I just kind of just barely kept reeling it, and my rod tip just kind of got heavy. Rather, it was the limb or the fish, and I just kind of slowly pulled, and then it just big old bull in the tree and my buzz bait come out. But Almost. Still ain't yeah. caught that fish. No, probably go back tomorrow and not catch it. Uh, yeah, he'd miss it again. <laughs> or I'd miss him. <laughs> That's just how that went. But so that was that was a less than desirable tournament. Yeah, and like I said, we were in. We did. We finished fourth or fifth at Wadawi. You know, and last year we had a shot to win Angler of the Year going into Pickwick to the last one, and then this year we started off finishing fourth or fifth at Wadawi. I think fourth. Might be wrong on that. Fourth or fifth. And uh, going into this one, we we're like, man, we almost did it last year. Like we got to catch them. We're going to win Angler of the Year. And dude, we just. I mean, you know, Luke's got a full-time job with TH. He couldn't get off to go practice three or four days, and, and the, or the weekend before, I couldn't either. And then So we got two days of practice, and one of them, Luke, when we were driving down, we didn't get there early enough to fish in the morning time. So we kind of screwed ourselves not preparing enough for it, but it is what it is. Yeah. Oh, well. No, no floating grass down there? No floating grass, but I'd rather have floating grass across the entire lake than to go back and fish Miller's Ferry one more day. Did it look like a yoo or was it uh, uh, Coosa it, color? It was kind of Coosa color, yeah. 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 But, dude, they had, for some reason, you know how pe- you know the people are that run the dams, but, that dude, they had fluctuated the water like two to three feet every day for five days. Why? Two Nobody. to three feet. Oh, dude. It's like not we a fish, deep pond, is it? And we would fit, we fished some reeds one day, and then we'd come back later that evening, and it was dry. You could see the mud up there. We were like, what is going on? And then the ne- we were that's, like, why are they dropping the water? We woke up the next morning, and it was like three feet higher. That it seems was like, unusual for this time of year yeah, for a and, body of water. And that's what we were saying. Like, man, why? Are, I don't know why they were doing it. And, like, we went there for the ABT South two years ago, and they didn't do that. Same time of the year. And I don't, I don't know what was going on or why they were doing it, what the reasoning was, but we looked at the charts and it was going up and down two feet, like during the day. And they were having a party up. down yeah. there, and just, it's took... just raising up and down, like, like a. Well, I shouldn't say that. I was going to say, that. never mind, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> I don't have a beat button. Yeah, I'm not, not sure where you're going yeah, with that, yeah, but we'll, we'll, we'll just, we'll just do this. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah. Just put whatever words you want in yeah. into uh, the end of that. The uh, uh, so next you're headed to you fall Oklahoma. Homa. Yep. Yep. You went out there once this year and flew a kite or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good place to fly a kite. Really good place. You when, went there after Rayburn, right? Uh, Toledo. Toledo. Yeah. yeah. Right after Toledo, I drove up and I thought, I thought that it was going to be like an offshore brush pile deal kind of kind of thing up there. So I went up there. I don't normally pre-practice to go find shallow fish because I just think that's dumb. Like you're not going to go flip a cypress tree that you flipped four months ago and catch a bass. Like right. I just don't believe in that. But I thought if it was going to be offshore, I could go find a bunch of brush and be a be a step ahead of everybody. And dude, I idled for 
two and a half days in like 30 mile an hour winds and I found one piece of brush but I don't think it was big enough if I'd have threw at it for two hours I don't know if I'd have hit it like it was so it's just like a, a br- little branch that had flew off in one of the four tornadoes they had in a week and fell in them you're probably gonna have one while you're over there too oh right? yeah that a buddy a buddy of mine that I know that lives there was like yeah you're you're guaranteed to have a tornado one day while we're here like just warn just you know warning hmm, lovely like, yeah, yeah, and I was so, like, okay, great. So, so carry a chin strap for your hat yep, while you're out yep, there. Yeah, and a mouthpiece, uh, yeah. So on to Gunnersville. It's, uh, today's June the, what, you were confused too. Fifth, today's yep. June the 5th. Uh, fish are biting. Mm-hmm. And the floating grass is terrible. I mean, just terrible. But uh, I've been out a little, I, mm-hmm. mostly mostly not. Brim fishing, had a little, had to do a little family uh, getaway weekend before that, or yeah, weekend before last. Got out just a little bit, caught a few, nothing over four pounds. Uh, same same case Saturday, caught mm-hmm. a few. Uh, floating grass is special. Probably yeah. going to get worse. Yeah. Uh, sounds like the evening bites are pretty good. Yeah. Uh, Trey's been chasing been, up Tuesday nighters. I've been going, I, I, I mean, like I said, I, other than the Miller's Ferry, that I've been out here a pretty good bit. And, you know me, I love to fish out deep. And, dude, I don't know what's going on this year, but it's just not – what it usually is like i don't know if the majority of the fish are still in the grass i don't now i will say like we i fished a bunch of them sunday and tuesday nighters and i don't think i've weighed in less than 12 pounds with three in any of them but like it's been taking 15 16 pounds to win with three which is good which is good but like out deep i'm not getting a lot of bites like i usually catch 30 to 40 in an evening when it's good like i've been catching 10 to 15 every evening it could but, be the fact that they're getting beat on yeah every but they're day. big ones like man right. i mean when i get a bite out there yesterday we probably caught 10 fish all evening and um one of them the biggest one was four and a half and the smallest one was three and a half and we only caught two under four so like, right. I mean, we caught a bunch of just four pounders, just solid four pounders. Yeah. But you just don't get many bites. Just not seeing that many down. Mm-hmm. And today you can look and go, well, there's only like twenty five down there. Yeah. You, you catch four or five of them, they scatter. Yeah, and so. then they're done. And yeah. but like I said yesterday, just like you talk about, they're getting so much pressure. Like I have like five schools that I've been catching them out of, and I would run to one and there'd be a boat sitting on it. And I don't know what these guys are doing for that long but they'd sit there for four hours like we talked about last night on the phone like just they just sit there uh, right and now if you find a group of deep fish and you want to fish them again you i mean you want to you better not leave yeah like uh, and I that's mean. how those guys were doing like on three or four of those schools they would just sit there and i'm running around like you said you either have to sit on one school or burn a lot of gas and i chose to burn a lot of gas and still not get on anything so i don't know yeah i don't know that's 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 no fun pick up a big worm get in the grass you can catch all the fish you want right yep. now that if means- i was fishing that big bass splash i would not go offshore that's right it's big bass splash week it starts friday yep uh it'll be a zoo uh if the wind doesn't blow 25 miles an hour one day it'll be the first time in Big bass splash history. It started in 2005 here. That it doesn't, but it's June. Maybe it won't. Yeah. You know, maybe maybe we'll get a break. Uh, talking about big bass splash, uh, we're going to have a, a different guest today. Um, there's a guy, Mike, and I can't pronounce his last name, but he goes by Mikey Balls on YouTube. He's got a huge following. Fishes guns for a lot. Makes some really cool videos. Comes up with some unique things. Uh, he and I had been talking since last year, I guess, about getting together and. Uh, having him on to talk and i thought well you know that dude likes to get on he makes videos catches some pretty big fish on videos mm-hmm. um we're gonna bring him on and get him to talk a little bit about um what he thinks mm-hmm. that you might take to catch a big one and you know what 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 the big one might be for the splash and whatever tips he may offer for that mm-hmm. so um let's see if we can get him on the phone uh, we're running a little late today i've already had to text him and go hey i'm running late so, <laughs> uh, but we'll see if we can catch up with him hold on just one minute and let me see if we can track him down all right, we have got YouTube Phenom. That's what I, he's not, he's not going to claim that, but we've got YouTube Phenom Mikey Balls on here. Mike, thanks for joining us. So who's the Phenom that's on the show today? That's <laughs> Trey. Mike. It's Trey. And I, and yeah. it's Trey. I, I was going to say, I know sure as hell it ain't me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Trey and I are the little peons in this world, and you know, we're we're glad to have some folks that's been doing. You play a different game than we do, but you know you you've got a good following and and put out a good product and and I appreciate you taking a little time to come on here and chat with us. So well, hey man, I love to, I like to chat. Anything about fishing, I'm down for. Yeah, man. yeah, you're you're kind of a I've watched some of your stuff over the time, and I'm like, yeah, he's kind of a nuts and bolts guy. He gives a a unique perspective on on how to do something or how to look at something. And me and Trey just get on here and talk about how bad floating grass sucks, but the fish like it. So. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's like, well, we could kill it all, but sometimes they get in it, so yeah. maybe we shouldn't kill it. But yeah. how could we? We've we've debated well, on making like a giant net that you could drag behind your boat and drag it off your spot. I probably just ruined a million dollar idea that Th Moraine is going to yeah. steal from his stupid Luke Duncan, and he's going to steal it, and make a million dollars. I shouldn't have said that, your buddy. But yeah, like a big old net behind the boat, just drag it off your school so you can cast on. We it. We don't yeah. need power poles anymore. We need grass poles. We well, that's what I'm saying. Drop them you like could drop it off your power poles and just drag that's the net a across. Good idea. You know I'm, what I mean? Every single time you get to a school, there's a giant floating mat on it. I've been thinking about something like that for years. I'm like, you just need to make like a shrimp net. Yeah, I really just stuff. screwed up. That's yeah. That's a million dollar idea. Well, the the handful of people that listen to us probably won't care. Yeah. So, and Luke probably doesn't listen either. So, <laughs> maybe we can put it together and sell it to yeah, Luke. Exactly. Uh, so, 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 Mike, for those three people that listen to us that don't know who you are, tell us a little bit about who who is Mikey Balls. How how did you get started and what you're doing? I make stupid youtube videos dude i guess when it comes down to it um i do a bunch of social media stuff that's probably what i'm most known for um i mainly youtube stuff but there's a bunch of stuff on instagram i like making content and making content about what i love to do which is go fishing that doesn't always mean catching them that's probably something you guys do better than me too up here but i i just shoot content i kind of came to play i'm a little bit older than a lot of people think um i just turned 40 so i sort of came to play when um when a lot of this video stuff and this camera stuff was just beginning. And um, I thought it was super cool to be able to kind of make your own stuff. And I started tooling around with it. And once I started doing it, I'm like, this is pretty cool because it's a lot better than a, I don't know what you guys, but I hate writing like fishing logs and stuff. It's obnoxious. Like, cause you can never capture all the details and all that shenanigans. So I looked at video and I'm like, all the information's right there. And it, it takes me two seconds to shoot versus the two hours it takes me to write like a, a legit fishing log. So that's kind of how it all started. And then it sort of dabbled into like the bloggy stuff and the tip vids and that. But like the OG version is I'm just capturing a day on the water and it's something that I can reference back and, and look at what they were doing like last May or on this lake at this time. And it was very informational for me personally. And um, it became something else. Huh? Organically. Yeah, cool. So how, how long have you been in North Alabama? I moved here in 2018, I think it was. So I'm going on about four years, five years, did, like right at the end of 2018. Did you, did you come up here because of Gunnersville? Kind of. Um, so one of the other things that I do is um, social media management, and I do a lot of work with. You get, well, you guys know JP, JP Kenny. Yeah. Um, I I do. I'm good buddies with him, and I do a lot of work with him. And one of the things we used to do back in the day was uh, we wanted to get out of Florida to shoot something different because Florida is like grass, grass, and more grass. And he's like, bro, I like offshore fishing, and I'm like, tell me more. And he's like, let's go up to um, Alabama and for a week let's shoot something that's totally different than what we normally shoot. So we link up over, and I always say it wrong, and you guys can correct me, is it Iuka? I, I, over over by Pickwick. Yeah, so Iuka, Mississippi. Yeah. Iuka, that's it. Yeah. Okay, so we would, I'd meet him up there, and we would literally do this little road trip. We'd spend like three days, four days on Pickwick. We'd dabble over, go to Gunnersville, and I think once we went over to Douglas, uh, we never got over to Kentucky Lake, but we basically kind of run across the strait and uh, across the state and then to uh, Tennessee. And then I would go home and we'd have a bunch of kind of offshore content. And that's when, you know, the graphs were peaking kind of and there wasn't too much fishing, like offshore fishing pressure. And, you know, it was I don't want to say easy because that's the wrong word, but it wasn't. Um, easier <laughs> yeah it was easier and like the, if you put your time in and you ran your stuff in like a six seven hour period you could catch 20 to 25 pounds pretty pretty straight you know you hit the right school and it was it was game on dude so it was pretty easy to shoot content even in the heat because the cameras went over eight because you knew when you were going to catch them you know so um i thought it was beautiful dude like uh, it was such a different layout than what i was used to all the people were, were nice, you know, which is a little different than the context I'm used to. And I needed to change. So um, that sure. was kind of the first thing I, I went to. That's cool. I, I always say I brought a buddy of mine, uh, Mark Schillings, that fishes the MPFL. 
up to Gunnersville on his way to somewhere else. And uh, he stopped. He's like, man, you think we can catch them? We fished for two days. And I told him, I said, look, dude, we'll have fun. But I'm just telling you, if you come here for like three days, you're going to want to move here. He lives in Texas. And I said, I know the fishing's amazing, but like everybody that comes to Gunnersville falls in love with it. And sure enough, man, he spent two days here and he was like, yeah, I messed up. He said, my girlfriend like really wants to move here. And he's like, I love it. Like, I, we're going to have to buy there, a house here. There's a reason when the when the BPT boys were here, there was like 15 of them live here. Yeah. Yep. Or, or consider yeah. it their home lake. Mm-hmm. You, you know, but, I mean, you couldn't well, pick a top you know, team. There's stuff, too. There, there's values to living here even. Like, we always talk about the things that's where we're focused. But the reality is, like, you guys doing the podcast. I know, Trey, you fish a lot of derbs and that, like, outside of Alabama as well. I travel a lot for the work that I do like the the location has so much value to people like us who are you know traveling to shoot stuff up north you're going to florida in january like mm-hmm. that central location i can go to lanier in, in four hours you know for like sure they, there's a lot of value built not only the good fishing locally to get a bunch of content and do what you need to do but just that that mobility and then the network that's built here just because there are so many of those guys here you know it's not un, unbelievable to go to the ramp and, and run into God, like, who's an example? Chris Lang. Gerald Swindle. You know, yeah. like Gerald Swindle. <laughs> yeah. Like any of these guys. And that network, even beyond it being cool to meet them, there's a lot of value to guys like me who are, are doing like the social media work and stuff to, to sort of enable that network and grow what we do, you know? Mm-hmm. For sure. That's what that's the main thing I love about living where we do. It's like I live about 30 minutes south of Gunnersville, but like I could be at Browns Creek in 30 minutes. I could be at Smith Lake Park in 30 minutes. I could be at Logan Martin in 45 minutes, Neely Henry in 30 minutes. Like I could go to like every fishery you can imagine other than smallmouth fishing in like 45 minutes. Like I could be I could be on completely different fisheries. Speaking of smallmouth fishing, did did I hadn't had much time today to actually get on social media, but I clicked on and I saw something of yours, a story or something. Did I see a brown fish you caught? On was that on Gunnersville? Yeah, Gunnersville? I caught off five. No, it wasn't. On oh, Gunnersville. I was about to say I, I didn't get to see it all. <laughs> no, it was out on Wilson actually. I went and dabbled around over there. I caught like a five pound smallmouth. They, where the largemouth should have been, dude. I'm all flicking that spoon up and it goes dong, and I'm like, dude, that's got to be a drum or something, you know? Like, I, like God forbid, I actually catch a good largemouth. And that joker came straight from like. I don't know, 15, 18 foot, straight to the surface. I'm like, holy balls, is that a smallmouth, dude? Yeah. <laughs> and it jumped so, six feet out of the yeah. air. <laughs> it jumped six feet out of the air, went absolutely crazy, and then I never caught another one. Yeah. Right come there. up and looked you, know, you out of eye. Yeah. That's what I always yeah. say. I'm like, that joker come yeah. up and stared at me, and then went straight back <laughs> down to 20 feet. that spoon, dude. Like, smoked it. It was it was a fun bite, but, I mean, you know how those guys get during Like, during the spring, they're, like, they're kind of migratory, but you can kind of – they pot up a little bit or they're in areas like dude you get to summer and like you catch one and you're like man unless you're on wheeler you're like that was pretty damn cool you know mm, but for I'm sure i'm not gonna see another one for like another two weeks so yeah at least know. maybe two years <laughs> yeah right <laughs> if you get lucky yeah i i, I said i didn't get to I, I flipped it on and then my phone rang so i watched about two seconds of it and i'm like dude call snowmouth sure that wasn't on gunnerful but there's been quite a few caught in the last couple of years it really has with with the water being as clear as it is people seem to think that that well of course the spots are really becoming something Dude, the spots are listen so i don't know about you guys and this is probably kind of dumb to say in, at heart i'm a spot guy like really? if i could like i love linear i love fishing for spots and this whole like the past i know what your experience is you guys have better range of time on gunnersville but for me about the past year and a half two years has been some of the best spotted bass fishing on gunnersville i've ever seen since i've been here and dude for me it is a blast because i have no problem i'm not a tournament guy so like if i catch 15 pounds or if i catch 25 it is what it is but if i can catch spots all day i will gravitate and chase that dude I as, as that long like as they rabbit. don't hurt the heads the large mouth fishing on gunnersville i don't care there are people that are concerned that the small mouth are, i mean the small mouth the spots are gonna push the push the heads out and that, that when we had a couple of bad recruiting years or, or spawn years for the largemouth that the spots didn't and and they kind of took it but dude gunnersville's huge really? i think there's room i mean dude, this I, is just I, mean, I think doctor. from the past couple of years for me there's more fish there's more largemouth in here now than i've ever seen in my life yeah. now there, there's more two pounders in here than ever dude there's but a, there's so many fish in this dude lake. there's a bunch of 10 and 12 inches out there i went mm-hmm. saturday fishing grass throwing a big worm around 
and they it was stupid i mean yep. you couldn't I mean, you throw a little bait out there and say well i'm gonna catch these little no they, yep. they wanted to hit a 10 inch worm you, yep. you, you throw a damn little bait out there on, on a light rod to catch a little fish you couldn't get a bite you throw a 10 inch worm out there they're ripping it out of your hand yeah uh, i like their attitudes that's right yeah. I, I, can t- I can tell you like spot fishing though because i spend a good bit of time over there at smith and i'll sneak over there one evening and i'll see your truck yeah. at the boat ramp i'm like yeah, yeah he's out here enjoying i so heard that, it was pretty hot they're right not now. super sizable but they're fun. and you know what it's smith's and another good example though where when i got here like smith was like okay still like a lot of rats but in my opinion like in the past like two or three years like you're not going to catch like 22 pounds like one year like out there dude there's some big spots that are actually catchable too like that lake's weird with how deep it gets and how they can move around but dude there's some some sizable like decent critters out there dude. oh for sure that like this past uh fall i got out there in some of the little drains and stuff and dude i would i would catch like 40 to 60 a day like just that's, but now like i said the biggest one, out there, dude. the biggest one might be you know three and a half you'd catch one like three and a half four pounder but you just catch a lot of just two and a half pound. but dude they fight i'm talking about and like you get the live scope like I, i'm i love live yeah. scope i suck at it but i love it like i love watching them come get it like it's so, so cool fun. So cool. And a buddy of mine went down there last week. But you know what week. you're getting into, too. Like, with the size one, that's hard to interrupt. But, like, even when you go to Smith, though, I mean, you catch that three and a half, and you're like, this is this is a good fish for here. Oh, yeah, for sure, like, yeah. yeah. It, it, as long as you're, like, relative with where you're at. And that's the whole thing, too, because a lot of guys, they give me crap for, like, well, why'd you leave Florida with, like, nine pounders? In fact, there's some bigs in Gunnersville. You can catch a 10, 12, 13 pounder. But like a lot of it's like how you set your like set yourself up for success. Like what is success on the body of water on that like where I'm at? Like what what defines like me me saying, Hey, I caught him pretty good, dude. And as long as you're you have that decent frame of mind, dude, any fishery is awesome, even if it's filled with rats, dude. Oh, for sure. For yeah. sure. Maybe not the Sabine River where the pros just yeah. were. Or <laughs> Alabama River. <laughs> or the Alabama just, River. Like, yeah. Trey, Trey just got back from the Alabama River. I he said he wasn't going I back. wouldn't wish it upon my worst enemy to spend 24 <laughs> hours on that place. That is the worst place I've ever seen in my entire life. But it, but it wow. is all about perspective. A three or four pounder is an eight pounder there. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. And I will yeah. say, like, I think I've seen the, the Miller's Ferry record bass like it had to be the biggest bass that ever lived and he was cruising on a brim bed and i look around and luke's sitting there with i shouldn't say that on this podcast but he's just sitting there and like we're looking at each other i'm like you got a wacky rig well i broke it off like an hour ago and it didn't tie it back on and dude it's like a six or seven pounder just sitting there waiting on a wacky rig to fall in front of it you didn't have one tied on i dang sure didn't have one tied on and i'm like what do we got? And he's like, I got an old monster. And I'm like, I seriously doubt this fish bites old monster. And he pitches it over there to it and it looks at it, like almost looks at us and is like, really, dude? Like, you're going to throw this at me? And he just keeps cruising down the bank. Like, dude, it was the most, it was, I told him, I said, you realize that was like the lake record. That was the biggest bass to ever get caught. And big bass was 501. And I promise you, like, it was a six or seven pounder. Oh. Like, giant. Well, dude, you you guys heard about the 12 that was caught out there during that, you know, that little weekend shootout that I was doing on Saturdays out of the park and that? Like there was a twelve caught out. Oh, it's Smith. Smith. Yeah, two, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That oh, what, that was actually um, one of my best friends that I grew up with. He caught it sight fishing. Dude, I shot a, I shot a video uh, with him, yep, dude. Yep, yep. <laughs> that's him, a, that's him and him stuff. and Dylan Lawrence. They caught it. it dude, uh, no, look. he well, he caught it sight fishing under a dock, and then like, dude, that fish was so old. One of his eyes had, that was like, last year. It was two years ago, two and years it, ago. It, one two of his eyes ago, had yeah. grew shut. Like there was moss on its eyes. Senior like, citizen. And, and get this, this was the dumbest twelve pounder ever. He broke that fish off I know, that, and that with a swim you. jig in its mouth and he <laughs> caught it again. Dude, I and, could and, I could, and on braid, dude. Yeah. And on braid. And on braid. At Smith. At and, Smith. And yeah. like Jen, and I'm like, dude, I would if that was me, like that fish would have seen my boat from a hundred yards away and like 100%. just run up on the bank and killed himself if I was coming to fish him. Like <laughs> yeah. he would have just me, been me like, and I'm you done. got the same luck level, dude. Yeah. Because that's the same thing. All that you hear about these guys and then you go out there like I'm gonna catch them, dude. It, it ain't happening, bro. Like no. just because I showed up. That's it. And I'm like, dude, I've never even seen a five pounder. Like there's so hard to sight fish for on Smith because it's so deep yeah. and, they, and they spawn so deep. And I'm like a 12 yep. pounder, and dude, they let it go right there at the park, and like it swam off. I guess it could have died more that than night. Most like, yeah, oh dude, and they they won the tournament by like 19 pounds. Like it was <laughs> retarded. Yeah, like it was crazy, but like it was giant, man. It was huge. That's, I was actually fishing mm. that day. 
a buddy of mine really? called him nine something on Smith this spring. That's who I was confused yeah, with. Yeah, Brad Vice. Brad Vice. Yeah, you Brad know Brad. Yeah. yeah, he's a great dude. Oh man. yeah, he is for he's sure. The nicest. His, dude. his uncle is a guy named Theron Livingston. Is my regular fishing partner. Now we've not got to fish much this year because he's been building a, a mother-in-law suite of sorts. But uh, but yeah, Brad. Brad's a good buddy. <laughs> I'm, I'm, he's he is a good dude. So he's a hammer too. Oh, he he's is. like super soft-spoken dude. But that dude catches them. Like he just he's good. one of these days he's gonna bust one of them BFLs, dude. Oh, I agree. He's no, one he's like you know he's there and all that, but like he will creep on you, dude, and will absolutely hammer him. And he does some kind of like maybe not off the wall, but like he thinks a little different than a lot of people. And he's a grinder, dude. Yeah, he's, he's not scared he's to try people. some different stuff for sure. The uh, on Gunnerful, we got the big bass splash this week. It's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Now Trey wishes he could fish it, but because of the level of stuff that he competes at, he can't. Uh, he said he loves the format, and yeah. I love it. I, and I knew, and I talked last week, Mike, and you know, I'm not going into details, but I've had some success there. Yeah, you know, just some mm-hmm. luck. And and uh, um, for anybody that's listening, that's going to fish it, if they want to catch one over seven pounds, what does Mikey Balls say we need to do? this week to catch one you know what here's the deal is the lake is set up and it doesn't mean i'm catching them all the time but in my opinion and like i'm gonna say this all the time because i do not have a bunch of experience out there and i'm not super good out there but i do know that right now the lake is set up the way i love the fish i can catch them in 15 to 25 feet of water and i can catch them in three feet of water and so like you can either flip or get shallow and fish that grass or you can go out there and graph them the one thing i will tell guys though is like you're not graphing these like epic you know six seven year ago kentucky lake thousand fish school kind of deals you're fishing for like pods of fish and like little groups and you'll get a few bites and usually the big one's going to go first you know so um, that's what i would do is go big or go home and and try to either flip one up or, or go search one of those deep ones that's maybe not on the ledge maybe it's drifting around but they're they're near where they should be kind of thing mm-hmm. if you can get close to it for 36 boats yeah that's, yeah. that's exactly but, what we were well, but that's the trick though dude is is some of that stuff i don't want to give up too much but some of that stuff isn't you don't need to be close to it like, right it's not be around it's obvious. It. like yeah yeah like it's not like the community holes are great but community holes are community holes for a reason it's like a certain area that that's good and yeah there's some structure that's that that what do you what do you call it? the fish identify with and they're relating to but it doesn't mean they can't be like 300 yards from it you know that mm-hmm. river ledge runs for miles dude so. yeah yeah and, and so does the floating grass you got any answers for that i kind of like the floating grass because if you time things right like if they turn the current because they haven't been running much current and like you got like a mini hole like we're talking about and it's been had grass sitting over it all day it plays good defense no i agree yeah there'll be some spots that don't get fished because of it yeah at five o'clock you roll in and it's like a virgin hole dude like it's (laughs) it's pretty naughty and there's different things. I'm struggling to not bust out laughing with the virgin hole. Yeah, thing. that was pretty inappropriate. I didn't even mean it to be inappropriate. Like, I like how I got there without even trying. It was just practicing, dude. So. No, but I, we'll, I we'll agree. get some more of that by the end of the day. Yeah. So. But I agree. That, that's true. Like, the, dude, that eelgrass, it does play good defense. But we, we said the same thing when we were talking about what we would do. And that, that's, that's kind of what I said. Like, I, I love to fish out deep. Like, I'm sure you've seen me ripping and running around out there every evening. But, like, I love to fish out deep. That's what I love to do. But, like, I I have fished out there for like two or three years like hard uh four days a week and man i have never caught a nine pounder out there i've caught a lot of seven yeah. and i caught one eight but i've never caught a nine like if i was in the tournament to make money and to cut checks like just you know in the top 10 or whatever they pay i would i would probably fish out deep but if you're wanting to win the boat i think the nine pounder lives in the grass i think it takes a nine pounder and i think he's going to get caught flipping or he could get caught or, on a buzz bait, yeah dude. it could yeah, get caught I'm, on a buzz I mean, bait early but i think he gets caught in the grass i i'm not saying they don't live out deep but i've caught so many bass out there and never I, caught I, one I, i'm sitting there thinking too and and now and i don't i fished deep less in the last three or four years since the electronics got so prevalent because i get frustrated at the way things used to be it's just because mm-hmm. i'm old and set in my ways but like i fish i fish <laughs> less out deep than i used to mm-hmm. but even 10 15 years ago seven pounds and mm-hmm. i mean well you, you and, know, and i, and I, I mean, agree with mikey on what he said too like i'm not saying like i'm talking about like deep like 
shell bars or road beds, stuff like that. Now, I'm not telling you that you can't nowadays with the technology we got, get out on one of them river ledges and not fish for a school, fish for a bass. Just scope a so, like, just, yeah. just yeah. troll around there. Like, yeah. I'm sure a giant lives there, but as in fishing a 15 to 20 fish school and trying to catch a nine pounder, I just don't see it happening. Like, I think you're either going to scope him up or, of course, a bridge. We all know the giants live on bridges. Yeah, but but a live scope, a bridge, or in the grass. I just I just don't foresee, like, sitting on a shell bag and catching a nine-pounder. It's a good way to catch four-pounders and cut checks, but I just don't see a nine-pounder being caught there. Mike, what do you, you think know, will be the big I fish? I kind of find – well, it, it, that brings up a good point. So, like, I don't derb fish. I used to quite a bit. But one thing that I do find interesting about these is, is a lot of guys look at them and it's like a – what do you call it like a jackpot fish mm-hmm. thing but the reality is is you don't have to fish it that way like yeah. you can make no. a lot of money fishing for five six seven pounders so like a lot of it kind of relates to what the angler what their game plan is dude yeah. like i know a lot of guys in florida it, like you always fish to win but you know you fish to win in the sense of, like letting it organically happen but a lot of my buddies down in florida like they'll actually go and they'll target those those hour windows you know and yeah. try to target them with like a five to eight a five to seven pounder and they're not even going to bother like saying hey let me throw a glide bait for freaking eight hours and try to just go big or go home so like that that's the game like a lot of these guys got to think about too is like do i want to go home with freaking 700 bucks or do i want to go big or don't go at all so yeah I, one of my best friends that i graduated with he's fishing at me <laughs> him what yesterday and i told him and it, there's a lot of strategy to it just like because like we said you can fish to win the boat or you can fish to win some money and i told him the same thing he knows all the schools i know and i said dude look if i were you if it were me and i was fishing it i would look at it as like first of all let's go make some money i would go out there to some of them schools and i'd crank me around a 10xd and a dt20 and catch me they let you have six in the live well between you and your three partner person. he's yeah. fishing with his dad i said i would let both of y'all catch three four pounders because you know you know, some some hours, four, four pounders don't get paid. Yeah, four pays 15 somethings. places an yeah. hour right now. Four, so. four and a half pounders. I said, we're catching a lot of those out there. I said, I would go catch me six of them, and then I'd go sit on a bridge or go look for a giant. But I said, make you yeah. some money first, dude. It's all about having fun making some money. I said, you don't got to go big. But like you said, you also can say, look, dude, I'm, I don't care about the $500 checks. I'm going to win the boat. And you can sit out there live scoping or flipping grass or whatever you're going to do, sit on a bridge and try to win. But that's, it's, it's all about strategy. I, I really wish I could fish it just because I, I kind of like the mindset of it. Well, and that lower end, I mean, you pretty good piece from Goose Pond, mm-hmm. you, you know. And, yeah. and, and, that, and that's that's the other part of the whole strategy to yeah. it is, you, you know, if you go down there, you need, if you can catch your six by nine o'clock, you're going to go spend the rest of the day at Goose Pond way and fish. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. can go fishing right there close in between times. Yeah. But, uh, it, it's because they only let you weigh one an hour. One an hour. So it's not like you can sit there and rack up. You know, you got you got to play it smart and and really pay attention to the hours. But it's hard to do that if you're in Browns Creek and the weigh-ins at Goose Pond. It is. You and, know, and when you weigh it, when you weigh it, you have to sit there till the end. Of, I mean, you have to wait like till you're kicked out. You oh, really? Know, see, like the big bass tour that deal, see that's you what weigh I and fish you leave and I left. You, you yeah. weigh and you leave. But with with the splash, you go up there and they got 15 chairs in the line under a tent, and you sit there until you're bumped out. Well, see that the uh, uh, big bass tour that I fished, it was real fun until I got DQ. I've had a lot of that in my career. <laughs> I mean, let's just be honest, dude. Anybody want to talk about that? Look, on. dude, I mean, I'm just, I, I'm just owning it. I've had a lot of that. I've had a lot of fun until I got DQ. That seems to be a reoccurring thing. Was that because you were considered a pro? Yeah, yeah. But I talk to the guy that's a like, bunch of crap i just want to throw that in there. my thing Random is man list. and i'm not trying to get on here and talk crap about uh, any trail or none of that i'm just saying like man i really enjoy the tournament i think it's awesome and i want to fish it but like dude my mother can fish the opens you gonna tell me i'm a pro i ain't no pro i'm, fi- yeah. I'm paying i'm paying twenty thousand dollars a year to get my teeth kicked in my mom can do that like i'm not <laughs> on the elite agree. series you know and, and dude, the reality is too because like in florida there's a lot i noticed outside of florida there's a lot more of those kind of like rules when it comes to the tournaments and in florida dude like i want freaking roland to show up i want scott to show up dude it's you know? fun man Sean fish against them guys dude, if you beat their ass like you done something exactly dude. like you know like that's and you're you're competing at the highest level and you're doing it for like a not like an amateur entry but you know what i mean at a price point that, that most of us can can access dude. Mm-hmm. and i think I don't know. I think that's cool. I don't like, and I'm not a rules guy either. I'll throw that out there. Like I, I, that's why I don't fish tournaments, dude. I hate all the stupid rules. And especially now, like they're getting so nitpicky with stuff. Like 
it's sort of like, hey, I want to have fun and maybe like do some of this tournament stuff on the side. But with all the rules you're throwing down on me, dude, like, and I understand why, you know, there's a lot of people who maybe want to manipulate the system in a negative way and that, but like, it's it's about the fun first for me and then the, the whatever else happens and all this rule crap, like it's, it's not fun. So, uh, I, 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 I agree a million percent. I, I think the times have just changed from what it used to be, you know, and I mean, I'm not going to throw no names out there, but you have guys that do fish pro that try to, you know, they, they kind of live in the gray area. And I think they're the part of the regions that's causing, causing a little bit of issues, you know, like, I mean, if you're going to live in the gray area, it's one thing, but I think back, you know, way back when, before I was even thought of like, everybody just follow the rules like they're just you know what i mean like it was just bass fishing. yeah but there's People... no honor among thieves well dude. and in reality a bunch of fishermen are just a bunch of thieves dude. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it is what we're, it is. we're yeah. gambling out here is all we're doing <laughs> yeah. that's right dude. i always said i'm not much of a gambler but i have i have spent a lot of money on fishing tournaments yeah. gambling over the years exactly. <laughs> and, and, and i'm like you mike I, i'm way less i think i've been in three this year maybe mm-hmm. i used to fish three a week yeah, you know, I mean, yeah. but but if you're really gonna play that game, uh, and on your home lake or wherever, if you if you're gonna play that game, you got to fish every single thing that you can put your name in because when it's your day, you need to be there because when in practice yeah. is no good. Yeah. So, but I yeah. don't get to go like much anymore, so I just kind of you know. Now the splash is not really a tournament; it's just yeah, I it's just, just fun, dude. I love it, and I get to go fish in three man. days. I just I really wish I could fish it just because it's so much fun, and it's just it's hard because dude, you could have the the you could catch the fish like if me and Mikey fish, we could have the fish to win two hours if we don't strategize right, we could lose. Hundred you know I mean? percent. Like it's yeah. just so cool that hundred it, it would suck if you did that, but it's kind of cool that it takes that much strategy, and you got to be smart about it and kind of play the game. Yeah, I think it's I, awesome. I, I enjoy it, and, and and I've had enough success in it over the years that my wife does not complain about me going fishing three days in a row i get to go fishing three days in a row and then don't get complained at till sunday afternoon so <laughs> i was telling trey that I've, I've almost been married as long as he's been alive so <laughs> not quite i had the 21 years this past april and you're what 20 30 yeah, yeah, yeah that, i'm getting old man that, that made me feel old i'm not gonna lie so wow <laughs> But, uh, but, you know, it's such a fun event. Um, I, I made some posts on the Bass Cash Bash and other pages this morning, or last night, rather. Uh, I reposted the uh, – the we, we when we tag fish, when we, when we release the boat tag and the truck tag, we video those and we say, hey, we're right here. Mm-hmm. Well, I let, the, I let the boat tag this year go at the Point of Pine Island, mm-hmm. which is – not used to be a community hole, but now it's a community hole, mm-hmm. and and kind of always has been. But it's and it ain't work. been caught yet. No, holy <laughs> smokes! Yeah, but, but I just wanted to remind <laughs> everybody. Five boats. Yeah. Yeah. Every hour I, I, and a half. Yeah, <laughs> like there's twelve boats sitting on it all day long. Two days well, ago. <laughs> I wanted when I when I let go of it. When I let it go, I kind of ch- or, or PD. I was holding the camera. I kind of chuckled. I really wanted to get the red buoy right there in the picture and go. This yeah. is the red buoy at the point of pine. I, yeah, I, I, I kind of chuckled because I, like Lonnie Cochran, who is a good friend of mine, he guides, and of course you know they run those things various yeah. times of the year, and and I. I text him i said dude i just let that go right here and he goes you dog what'd you do that for <laughs> so so naturally when i reposted the video last night what did i do i text lonnie i said hey lonnie guess what i just reminded everybody where i let that thing go and, you know, and i just want people to know hey you're going to be fishing you're going to be coming in from out of town sign up don't be that guy yeah you, you know but I, I have had a lot of fun with that i, I kind of i, I kind of have chuckled just a little bit yeah, I, that's it, pretty it, funny i mean how has that bass not been caught he's a smart one dude I, where he went i don't know you know i let the, I, mean, I, I let the truck tag go uh kind of at the mouth of spring creek right there in front of city harbor how have you not caught that how yet? have i not caught that bass <laughs> i mean what in the world dude <laughs> <laughs> I've drug a DP-20 on every rock down there, every, every home, piece of every, shell, yeah. every... Well, you know who's going to catch it is some dude in a bay line or a sea ray, dude. He went and had a couple beers up at City Harbor, dude, and he just floated a little worm off. Yeah, he yeah, floats out there in an inner tube with a, with a with yeah. minna. That that or that or somebody fishing and they use that tag as a toothpick and you hear about yeah. it a little bit later. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they're like, dude, I caught this tag and it said boat, man. I don't really know what that means. But. So so last year during the splash, which it was not in June last year, it was March, I guess, last mm-hmm. year. Uh I'm at the boat ramp at Browns Creek one day I had put in down there and there's a dude walks up to me and I start talking to him and he said, Man, I said, Are you signed up for that thing? And he said, Yeah. He said this dude standing right over here caught the truck tag yesterday, but he's not signed up. 
And I, oh and I said, really? So I was going to go over there and talk to him. And before I got over there, a dude got in his truck and drove off. And I said, do you know him? And he goes, no. He said, he was just telling me about it a few minutes ago. So I didn't ever get to talk to him. <laughs> but, but then somebody else told me about it. I mean, I had people telling mm-hmm. me, going, hey, I heard the truck tag got caught. And I'm like, well, that's what I heard. And I almost got to talk to the guy. Yeah. But uh, You got uh, to talk to the guy that he, won the boat. Yeah. And that buddy. almost screwed up. Yeah. Somebody yeah. that almost screwed up. Yeah. yeah. We've told that story on here. And Mike, the bridge version of that is, is uh, Trey's buddy, his ABT partner, won the boat two, three years ago. Two years two, two ago. Two years ago. He was in my boat. In Trey's boat. Standing yeah. right beside me. And I was not registered. Yeah. <clears throat> and he caught really? it. Yeah, yeah. And he caught the boat tag. Yeah. He, 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 Trey was almost that guy. Yeah. I was, dude. I probably would have just jumped in and just held my breath and just <laughs> sank to the well, bottom of that another, ledge. You would, another example of your luck level, dude. Yeah, you would, you would have grabbed that shell bar and seen me laying on the bottom if I would have caught that. Trey, you're too skinny. We would not even see you. would be like that twig. He's talking <laughs> about you. Up. Up. <laughs> no There's return. a catfish down there would eat you. <laughs> so, flip, flipping or fishing deep, that's the answer. Yeah, well, I think yeah, so. Somewhere in between. I mean, you catch a lot of fish on that big old, old or big old worm, whatever your flavor is. You, you know, there's a. I've, I've caught a lot of seven pounders in June on a big worm on yeah. the riverbank. I agree yeah. with what Mikey said, though. I think we all kind of agree. I think you can kind of look at it a couple of different ways. Try to judge whatever you want to do. You want to go big or go home, or you want to kind of fish offshore like we talked about and catch you some four to five pounders and win you a couple hours, or maybe not win them, but get you pay get you entry. some money yeah. get you entry, pay your entry yeah you know <laughs> get make some money so your wife don't be mad at you when you get home you know so right. i don't know or right. you can just say you know what i'll just let her be mad and go out there and live scope around <laughs> and stuff just see if i can win this boat and probably get divorced when i get home <laughs> well and so 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 mike i don't you don't you're not a you're not a tournament guy you, you're not you're not playing in that or anything like that no, I'm not. But you know what I do need to get signed up for is that that bass and cash deal. You got it. You got a month I mean, left. I, yeah, I go and tool around so much. I've never caught a tag fish though. So you will. Um, I hadn't probably, either. Yeah, I know exactly. And I almost did. You did too. You well, caught one the first well, yeah, year. Yeah, the first year I caught one. That's what makes it worse. Trey wasn't signed up that year. The year that Daniel, his buddy, caught the boat. Dude, the, I was the so year broke. before he caught me. He was he said, I was, I was so broke. broke. I was like, dude, that's a hundred bucks. That's like two <laughs> two or three meals, man. I'm trying to eat over here. But, uh, uh, Mike, Mike, come February if you're if you're shooting it. Well, you're normal. I think you're in Florida or something. But come February this next February, if you're if you're uh, in North Alabama, you can come shoot some videos with us tagging fish or something at one of the tournaments if you want to. I would that highly enjoy that, man. But, uh, yeah, like, cause, because I like, you know, not to talk down on the tournament stuff, but I do like the, the whole catch and release thing, you know, and getting them back in the water quick. And that's just another, like, example of a format where we're getting those fish in, you're getting a prize, you're getting that, that glory photo, that hero photo, and then you're getting that fish released immediately, you know, and you're taking something away from it. So it's, I like that kind of process, so, dude, and I think a lot of stuff is going to move towards that. Yeah, so the, so the guy that, that brought it to me, I mean, he owns it, is P.D. Vincent out of Louisiana. He started it on Toledo Bend and then Sam Raver. But you know his his goal with that is is his term is to enhance the fishing experience because I mean we have people that tell us dude I love it you know I I, I don't fish tournaments but every time I go fishing there's a chance I can win fifteen hundred dollars or a boat or a truck you yeah. know? Mm-hmm. and and it I mean, it's just crazy how much people have well, enjoyed it. Well, I think it. it's cool that like even people fishing off the bank if you don't have a boat that don't mean you can. Dude, had, there's been two crappie that's fishermen. A great point, one Trey. one crappie that's fisherman a caught point. the truck off standing off the that's right Browns Creek Causeway like it's just mm-hmm. something you don't have to go spend sixty thousand dollars to get in a boat and go do it. Man, anybody can. He's still driving that truck that he won crappie fishing. Like that's just awesome. Man. I've had cool. two winners this year, two fifteen hundred or two two cash tag winners off the bank this year. Yeah, see, mm-hmm. like I just think it gets everyone involved, and that's what fishing's about, man. It you is. Don't, you don't Fun. have to have a an expensive boat to to go out there and enjoy bass fishing. Mm-mm. No, but it is nice. <laughs> <laughs> it is well, nice. I say that I don't have. I've got an old boat, but you know I've got expensive electronics on it. Yeah, but, uh, it is nice to go out there and rip and run around fast, but uh, you don't. But have you don't to have, have to. Yep. You don't have to. You don't, and you can catch them on live bait doesn't yep. matter it doesn't don't matter it doesn't matter but you know what mike if you catch one and you're not signed up you are that guy <laughs> so hey, listen i've been in before so <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time dude. <laughs> so, uh, well mike we could sit here and talk fishing forever uh but and i'm probably going to get you back on here and do it again because it's fun so awesome. but, i'd enjoy it and, uh, man I, I can't thank you enough for taking the 43 minutes well probably me and trey babbled for a few minutes so 40 minutes of our time to uh to uh, your time to come on here and talk fishing with us a little bit for those listening if you haven't checked him out he's got a great youtube channel mikey balls 
uh, I believe he named his boat Blue Balls. We, I'm not. <laughs> I know. I goes back to the version hole. I, I don't sold. Know. I sold Blue Balls, dude. Oh, you got Spaceballs space balls. now. That's right. The space Balls now. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> you can't wait to hear next year's now. Yeah, I can't yeah, wait right, to see exactly. what's next. <laughs> <laughs> Floating grass balls. Uh, just, yeah, just, right. Uh, but anyway, Mike, I sure do appreciate you taking a little bit of time to come on here and chat with us and share some of your knowledge. Um, we're, we're looking forward to doing it again. We're, we're going we're gonna to get you back out here, and, and uh, we may get – I'll tell you, if I can ever get – you're not that far from me. If I can ever get you to come over here to my office and sit down with us, we'd probably have to split it up into two or three episodes because it's going to be too long. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, we'd have a good old time with it. Yeah. I appreciate it, guys. I love chat and fishing. It's cool to chat with people. Like, you guys have so much more of a, a knowledge base and experience on the lake, so it's interesting to hear kind of – what the lake was before I got here, what it is now and how you guys see it. Like I'm all about like kind of learning about that. You know, I didn't just move here to fish. Like I like the whole, what do you call that? Like the whole experience of it, you know, mm-hmm. you guys have so many of those experiences out there and it's, it's cool to hear about that and how you kind of think about the lake as it is. So I appreciate it. And definitely I'm down, dude. I'd love to do some more. All right, man. Talk to you soon. Have a good one. Later guys. See you dude. Man, that was pretty good. I'm, that, was, I, that was cool. I, I, Man, my, I, I've met him a couple of times. I've never really got to sit down and chat with him a good bit. Every time I met him, it's been as nice as could he, be. But I, I enjoyed that. Yeah, he 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 is. Yeah, he, he's a good dude. I, I appreciate him coming on. Um, you know, he's got good. Bottom line, he, time on the water. Yeah, and and I'll, I'll say he he says he ain't no good at it. Trust I, me when I, I tell I you, he has put his he's, time in. He's just trying to be like. You know, he just don't want to tell you, like, oh, I'm pretty good. You know what I mean? Like, right. But he has spent his time out here, and he, he knows what he's doing. Oh, for I, sure he does. I promise for, you. For, for sure. And, again, he's got some good videos. Yeah. And, too, I mean, people your age and now, mm-hmm. YouTube is the only TV you watch. Yep. I mean, do you even yep. do you I don't watch? even watch. I don't watch TV. I, I watch YouTube. Like, that's yeah. just all I've watched for since I was, like, 16 years old. I don't watch TV anymore. That was only so five, six years ago. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. A couple seven, weeks ago. Seven, but uh, just, uh, just got my driver's license. Just... <laughs> Try, try you're gonna make me go <laughs> anyways yeah. back, back, back to that uh the weather looks pretty good i'll be shocked if we don't get a 30 mile an hour wind day one day out of three days for the big bass splash that's kind of like the k dawson rule for abt's mm-hmm. it's normally there's normally one bad one yeah but uh it is june finally it's getting warm finally water's still kind of cold but uh um i'm looking forward to it i'm, I'm ready to go I, I get to go to the lake thursday evening and stay till sunday and that's what Most, I'm talking about. Yeah, I mean, you know, that'd be more. If I fish three days in a row, that'll be two more times than I fished in the last three weeks. So. <laughs> and it's three days in a row. Three days in a row. You, you can normally figure something that. out. We, yeah. we we figured out last year it takes. It, it, we my my partner caught a seven pounder the last day and we he won the last hour and we hit. I got like one or two little checks the first day and I, I'll little check them to death. I don't care, you know. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, uh, but we were like, how many fish do you have to catch to catch a seven pounder? Or how many days? Well, the answer is three. You got to fish three days, and we caught, finally caught a seven pounder <laughs> <laughs> on a chatterbait and some eelgrass. Go yep. figure. But uh, um, tournament wise, it's kind of winding down. Uh, mm-hmm. I guess our podcast season's kind of winding down. We may be able to slide another one or two. I think you're going to be traveling most of the yeah, rest of June. I got, but, uh, yeah, I think June's pretty busy. And then I've got. Uh, after St. Lawrence River, though, in early, I think it's the second week of July, I'm, I'm pretty. You're pretty done, man. but yeah. but once I get so back here, fishing, I was about so. to say once I get back home, the fishing's for sure done. July and August, you know, yeah, it's and just, September is just it's honeydew season. Yep, yep, uh, yep. But, uh, we'll try good luck in Oklahoma. I'm gonna need it. Uh, you're gonna need it. Carry you carry your kite, your sail, yep. whatever you need. Yep. So, uh, tournament wise, you got the Wildcats running mm-hmm. uh, Wednesday morning, two, two days from today. The dude that runs the sunday afternoon browns creek tournament it's out of the back browns creek ramp back there <laughs> by is, fire by the lake yeah yeah across from fire by the lake uh he is is having uh he's having a wednesday tournament the first wednesday of each month uh runs like daylight till two it's cheap too it's a 35 dollar tournament or mm-hmm. something like that but uh go take their money yep uh, you ain't got nothing else to do on wednesday it's not like you that's got right. work that's right so uh until next time good luck at the splash enjoy the floating grass there's gonna be plenty of it. Thank you.